have our first appointment, James Murphy, Environmental Protection Agency, and he's going to speak, A, about the Coakley Landfill. Would you please, you can sit at the uh, desk here, and uh, <clears throat> we welcome you. Thanks. Hi there, so um, Jim Murphy from uh, the EPA uh, Region 1 office, which is in Boston. I am the, uh, the leader of our uh, government relations and community involvement um, team in the regional administrator's office. Uh, Attorney Gerard asked that I uh, be here uh, this evening to uh, talk about the specifically the meeting that we were uh, had scheduled with the, uh, the Coakley Landfill Group uh, Executive Committee, um, which I think probably everybody is familiar with. Probably six months ago, most people were not very familiar with Coakley Landfill Group. It's uh, um, they seem to be very, very well known uh, at the moment. So it's a group uh, that is, uh, and the Superfund process and the Coakley Landfill Group has been on the national priorities list, which is a Superfund list for 25 years or thereabouts. I don't even know the, the exact number off, offhand, quite a while. Um, at the time, uh, when, a, when a site is listed on the Superfund site, we do a, uh, a search for responsible parties. Uh, the Superfund program essentially is that the, uh, the principle is that the polluters should pay if there are uh, responsible parties that we can still find. A number of the sites we have on the list are abandoned sites. We spend a lot of time trying to <coughs> track people who either uh, brought waste to the site, transported it, generated it, um, or owned it, um, used the site over the years. So uh, doing that with the Copley Landfill Group, we did identify uh, a number of parties who were still viable parties to this day. We had been meeting essentially for most of those 25 years on a regular basis. Uh, we have uh, a consent decree which is, uh, kind of outlines the, uh, the parameters of, of what would happen under the cleanup. It has been adjusted numerous times over the years. Um, and we have, we've had these meetings, I don't think we have been asked to have uh, a meeting with the landfill group as a public meeting before. Um, and I think that, well, I, I know the response that uh, uh, we gave Attorney Gerard was that, uh, that it's not a public meeting. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you know, we try to be transparent in all of the uh, proceedings that we have uh, out in local communities. Um, we typically uh, come out to talk to boards of selectmen, to community groups, to neighborhood groups, to individuals, try, uh, try to answer all their questions. This meeting is, um, again, it's a meeting with their executive group. I don't even know if they invite, um, you know, members to come to it. Uh, the, we're not, <coughs> we're, we don't force them to come to the meeting. Uh, when, when we request a meeting, they usually come to it. They wouldn't have to come to it if they chose not to. Uh, I don't think they would do that because we would eventually have to resolve that in a more legal way. We haven't had to do that. They essentially have been very cooperative, um, particularly the last couple of years uh, when uh, the, the whole PFC issue has, um, has come to our attention as well as most of the communities in the, um, um, in the Seacoast area. Um, so I don't know, uh, you know, what folks want me to talk about at the moment. I would rather maybe just just take some questions uh, if people have concerns. Okay, we'll open up to questions. Let's start with Ms. Barnes. Well, I think our concern was that the EPA was going to get together and make all these decisions when we're the ones that actually have to deal with the consequences of whatever the Environmental Protection Agency right. makes. Now, you're saying this was sort of more of a technical session. <laughs> Well, it is, it is a technical session, and typically we're going to go in there, you know, we have an agenda, which is <clears throat> things we're going to talk about are um, uh, sampling fish in the, air, in the, the water bodies around the landfill, um, how to uh, potentially address uh, leachate, which is uh, contamination that is leaking from the landfill into the surface water bodies. Uh, there is the issue of, uh, of uh, PFCs at the uh, Aquarian Wells. Uh, that's also something we were going to discuss. We were going to 
<coughs> discuss uh, moving ahead with uh, an investigation of the bedrock, which has not been, uh, we don't really have a good idea of how the contamination is moving once, once it, it gets down deep into the bedrock. Uh, so those, and, and the last thing we would discuss is communication with the public because we, are, we have had periodic public meetings. We're planning one for uh, probably mid-October to late October at this point, and we would be asking, you know, Coca and Anfield Group to participate in that meeting. Um, so there's probably, decisions probably aren't going to be made. These topics will be discussed at the meeting. Then, you know, depending on what they have to say, what we have to say, you know, we'll, we'll then ask them or direct them, depending on what the issue is, uh, to take action following that meeting. We would report out to the public, you know, what, what transpires at the meeting. Um, so we're not, you know, uh, we're not going to come out of this meeting with, uh, you know, a list of things that we've all agreed on that are going to impact people without hearing from people in the area. Okay. Well, my only concern is that you do listen to the people that are in the area. You know, we have, uh, we have water. We have, as you said, you know, Aquarians already started to get problems going on. Right. And I think we should be involved in part of that, too, where it's our, our citizens' water. <laughs> You know, um, you have many people that, have, that polluted that, including the U.S. government. Right. And uh, so we want to just make sure that our citizens are protected, and that's why we've we've asked to be part of this and make sure that we can be part of it. Right. Well, I think you know our our goal is is to protect the citizens, and I know, um, and you know that that the TPA's responsibility to um, you know protect human health. We have certain tools that we can use. Um, you know, the Superfund program is one of them. We also have a drinking water program um, that, along with DES, regulates the public water supplies. Um, and we're going to be trying to set up a meeting with Aquarian in the near future also. Just to, we just need to gather more information. The way that we work, unfortunately, <coughs> is we kind of, you know, we kind of have silos in the, in our office, we have a drinking water program. We have a Superfund program. We go ab about doing our business occasionally. Uh, you know, we run. We have common issues. This is one of the common issues, and we are, you know, trying to to move ahead as quickly as we can. It's not as quick as people would like. Um, you know, these are emergent contaminants that we're talking about. They are not. Uh, we don't have the authority to order Coakley Landfill uh, Group to go and start sampling wells all over the place. Until, the, until contamination hits a certain level. Um, that's something that people really don't want to hear. Um, I am also would think that people don't want to give EPA that type of authority to just go in and tell people that they should be forcing them to do stuff that's, that doesn't meet the criteria that's set up through Superfund. Superfund's evolved over 35 years. Um, EPA has a lot of authority, but there are a lot of things that we just can't move ahead. There are a lot of rules and regulations that we have to follow. I think people can understand that. It's frustrating at times for all of us, but we're trying to move ahead as best we can. And again, you know, the Coakley Landfill Group has been open to uh, a number of the suggestions that we've had to them, uh, we've made to them over the past months, uh, things that they have not had to do. Um, and we're, you know, we. Well, I think one, one of the um, suggestions that I would have is that people here, you know, you, uh, they're, they're your neighbors. You know, a lot of these responsible parties at Superfund sites are, are multinational corporations. They might not even have headquarters in the United States. They're very difficult to talk to. These people are, are your neighbors. Um, you know, some of the towns in the area, I think, you know, approaching the Coakley Landfill Group is... Um, you know, I'm not saying that that's going to solve any problems, but just to have communication at that level um, instead of just expecting that, you know, EPA is going to take care of it uh, and, you know, and get the word out to everybody, which we, we will try to do, but we do have to work through our process. You know, it's not going to hurt to have, you know, local legislators, local elege uh, elected officials also um, talking with Coakley talking amongst yourselves, talking with the Aquarian. I think a lot of that is happening, and, uh, and hopefully we're going we're gonna to make progress. But again, you know, there's only so many. We, we pretty much have to stay in our lane. Our bottom line is that we want to protect people um, from drinking contaminated water. 
Uh, but it needs to, you know, hit a certain level before we can kind of put the hammer down and, you know, um, us shut down a well or Russ order somebody to provide alternative water. That can be done, but it can't be done at the levels that we found it at uh, thus far. And there's been a lot of talk about, well, obviously, Coakley Landfill is the, the reason for all of this contamination in the area. That may well be, but we do not have the... Uh, the proof of that right now. You know, we are, we're trying to, uh, to track it from the landfill. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons we want to meet with Aquarian to find out, uh, you know, from their technical people uh, exactly where the wells are, how deep they are, how often they're monitored, what type of, um, you know, century uh, wells they have in the area. So we have, we have a lot of information still to gather. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I know we're not, we're not moving as fast as people would like to see us move, but we're taking it very seriously. We're putting resources into it, and uh, you know, we hope to. Uh, we just hope to make progress on it. Mr. Griffin, no. Mr. Bean. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Jim, for coming up. Jim, uh, your title. You're the team leader for government relations and community involvement. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Are you a scientist? I am not. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, a degree in sciences? I do not. Okay. So you are a public affairs guy? That's correct. Okay. All right. I'm going to give a little background, Mr. Chairman. I talked to you earlier and, and, and would inform you that I'd be doing so. Um, as a backdrop, uh, it was in today's paper, Jim, uh, in Bedford. Are you familiar with what's going on up there? Uh, not specifically. Okay. Because they're past that testing phase, and they're, they're experiencing uh, challenges in their water system. Bedford's a, a very wealthy community. They're drinking out of plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is in the paper today. More than 100 property owners were giving tax deductions or tax abatements, um, and they equated to about $7.5 million in assessed value, which cost the town, and this isn't the important point, $166,000 in revenue. Uh, Bedford, again, uh, an affluent community. They have these same issues. Um, and they're drinking out of water. The town is now uh, losing tax revenue. Um, perhaps uh, um, as, as you look at uh, highly paid executives in the EPA, uh, those types of revenue streams are disappearing. Uh, what is your what has your organization done in Bedford in terms of moving past what you think are discussion points uh, to uh, impose actions by responsible parties to mitigate what I just discussed with you? Okay, I'm not familiar enough with it. Is that where the uh, okay, no, no, the, the I, I, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm just going to, I'm, 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 and this, this gets to the point of the issue, okay, and this is strictly strictly factual. There's nothing personal. Sure. And, and we've sat before, okay? You're not a scientist. We've got people down the road, okay, uh, that are drinking out of plastic bottles, okay? Right. You're the EPA. Mm -hmm. We just heard you comment that uh, you're in discussion points, that you don't have a good idea what's going on, uh, and that uh, um, there's consent decrees out there. So, um, I'm not panicking. I'm talking about facts. And uh, that's right up the road. The EPA uh, is like a lot of federal agencies. Um, and I will tell you, and again, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I told you I'd talk about this as background, because this is fact as well. Uh, I'm on the uh, website for the Camp Lejeune Water Commission, okay, in the water study. And between 1957 and 1987, Marines and their dependents and children were drinking water that causes eight deadly diseases that have been recognized by the VA finally, okay? I, I don't think uh, the EPA was especially uh, uh, active in that. And when you read these eight cancers, they're scary. And they look painful and they're deadly. And children are getting them. And finally, in 2016, um, these men and women and their dependents finally get a little cooperation, okay, uh, from uh, federal agencies, okay, mm -hmm. well past the discussion point. Right. So you see my point on that, don't you? Well, I, 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 I know I, you do, because it, it doesn't even need a response. And then I will say, and further, 
uh, with service in a federal agency, with a top secret security clearance with the United States government, that all of my uh, records, confidential 126 page reports on me and my family and my history and my life um, was, was swiped. And it's a big deal this week when Equifax does that for people's credit reports. And the data that was stolen uh, and then not told to us um, for months and months and months later is out there in the web my entire life. Uh, another federal agency that allowed that to happen, the Department of Defense. So I will tell you, and I would tell the board, and I would tell this town, that factually, uh, I don't have any confidence that the federal government is going to protect us. Now, you specifically said there's some consent decrees that are out there. Mr. Gerald, does the town of Hampton have a copy of the consent degree, the initial consent degree, in any amendments or alterations or additions or subsequent filings of that? We do. We do. Okay, I would motion right now that that be all of those be put on the town website. Second. Do you have any comment to make on that? No, nope. I uh, they're uh, they're very lengthy, but uh, we'll see if the town yeah. website. I'd like to read lengthy things when we're talking about cancer and water. Right. Yeah. All in favor? Good. Thank you. Now you're talking about. Uh, 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 you don't talk to other agencies, and that's the whole problem with this thing, Jim, is that this this is a smokestacked response. You've got the United States Air Force, you've got the United States Navy, United States Department of Transportation, you've got municipalities that have polluted. All right? Now, you're a government affairs guy. What has your government agency, the EPA, done this week, last week, what have you done to drive the exigency and the cogency and the urgency of need uh, with situations that are going on like in Bedford? And hopefully, uh, it's not the case that this plume is coming towards the Hampton Wells. What have you done to reach out is the EPA? And I think you're wrong when you say we don't expect you to do something about it. That's why I think you get a paycheck from us. We do expect you to put the hammer down. What have you done this week? this month, this last year with those other agencies to drive them to the table to protect our water so we don't end up like Bedford. So um, as far as dealing with the other agencies, I mean, that was done initially when when the parties were gathered to, to sign this consent decree. We had discussions with all of those parties. They agreed together to um, there, there's, a, there's actually a second, a second transporter, a, a smaller group of, of PRPs at, uh, at Coakley. <clears throat> they agreed amongst themselves to, uh, you know, essentially elect their leadership to agree, uh, you know, how much, uh, how much responsibility, how many, you know, how many shares they would, they each own, essentially, when, whenever, whenever there are, are costs that come up. So we don't t talk to them directly about that now. We talk with this executive committee, which was a the group that we were meeting with. We have, um, you were mentioned a number of Department of Defense entities. We've worked very closely with them at other sites. We have worked with them, excuse me, very closely at Pease over the years. Um, there are other sites where uh, Department of the Defense has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on groundwater issues. I know Camp Lejeune is, there's no excuse for what, what happened there for the, the length of time it took to um, for DOD to essentially kind of own up to it and to get moving on it. Um, down at, at uh, Massachusetts Military Reservation in Cape Cod, since the uh, early 90s, they had been, they've spent um, extensive resources just to address groundwater there. <coughs> One of the problems, uh, uh, kind of a twist there, is they were looking for <coughs> volatile common, uh, contaminants, kind of the typical things you would find at, at an airfield or a defense facility or a city, and they were not looking for PFCs at this time. There is a, a, an issue with PFCs down there, despite, you know, the Air Force spending hundreds of millions of dollars on groundwater uh, remediation systems because they were not targeting PFCs, and they actually managed to kind of concentrate, um, you know, they managed to contaminate some off-site areas with PFCs that, that had not been contaminated before because they didn't realize that it was doing what they were doing because the science the science is still advancing and as frustrating as that is to us we don't have the answers I know I talked about these silos that we don't talk enough to each other we're trying to do that right now we're doing it at, at EPA we are going to talk to Aquarian um, and 
uh, you know, you've asked what we've done over the last month, the last year. We, we are in contact with the Coca Landfill Group close, uh, close to a, a weekly basis, if not more than once a week, on our technical level. Um, we're not talking to their executive committee all the time, but we're talking to their uh, Peter Britz, who was their kind of their um, spokesperson. Uh, we deal with him uh, a couple of times a week, generally. He deals back, you know, with the Cochlear Flip Group. He he deals with their uh, technical consultants. So we're talking with them on a regular basis. We talk with DES multiple times a week about Cochlear as well as other sites that we're working on. Okay, and thank thank you for that answer. And I, I would say, uh, in this board, unanimously uh, sent a letter um, drafted by Town Esquire and the Town Manager uh, to uh, Mr. Sullivan, who is also the City Attorney mm -hmm. uh, for the Coakley Landfill Group, and he's responded. And like other issues in town, once it goes to our attorney, um, I, I think it needs adult supervision. And uh, I think they see. Uh, uh, LG uh, is long past uh, the need for adult supervision. We have Aquarian in back here. There's a stock purchase plan going on with Eversource, two fine companies. Their water is suddenly getting polluted, and uh, they don't pollute. They take a natural resource out of the ground, and, and uh, somebody out there, and perhaps, but you guys aren't doing enough work um, to test on this, move past the discussion uh, phase, is that. Uh, I, I have less confidence in them than I do in those other two federal agencies that I told you. It took 30 years to protect Marines and sailors uh, from bad diseases that children and young military people are dying from. So uh, the Coakley Landfill Group, and talking to them, is uh, yesterday's news, and we're well past that. Well past that. What have you uh, done, Jim, as the uh, government affairs uh, charge the affairs, if you will, as the team leader in Boston. What have you been communications with our legislative delegation from New Hampshire in Washington, D.C., to include U.S. Senators uh, and U.S. Congresswomen uh, for their efforts in terms of fixing and shaping a final cost uh, for remediation and securing uh, a ring of steel around the Coca Landfill Group that uh, destroys any potential of these carcinogens coming into the water supply that these men um, have a company that uh, pumps it out of the ground for. What have, what have been your most recent discussions with them and further uh, addressing a cost? And have you urged, or at this point, some 30 years later after this has occurred, have you fixed any point uh, of a figure that some of these leaders in Washington could attach to a defense bill is an appropriation, some 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars uh, to provide money to secure us and secure a safe water supply. And I'm interested in a specific answer on that. Right. Okay, so we, you know, as, as a federal agency, we're prohibited from, you know, from lobbying. Okay, let me just let me just stop you there because I've worked in the federal government. There are congressional liaison offices. The EPA right. has that. So let's not obfuscate. And, and let me just finish this, okay? Because I want to take this to a very serious discussion. Sure. Let's not play games, okay? Let's get down to brass tacks. We we know what we're talking about here, okay? I'm a federal agency guy. Mm -hmm. You are. Let's get back to answering the question and, and stop talking about lobbying. I'm right, not, to, not talking about lobbying. Oh, you that were. Was, you just okay, did. Okay, well, maybe it was the wrong word. It was. Representative. But um, we have congressional liaison offices. We respond to uh, to the U.S. Senator's offices uh, in New Hampshire multiple times a week, as well as the congressional offices on a wide range of, uh, of environmental issues. So we respond promptly. Uh, we try to get them answers for whatever they're uh, asking, whatever they're asking for. If they're asking us for... What uh, they haven't asked us what we estimate, you know, some kind of remediation system at the Coakley Landfill Group would cost. I don't think we would have an answer for them right now. Um, if they they've asked us about uh, public meetings, they asked, they called and asked if someone was going to attend this meeting tonight. I mean, we get calls from um, Senator Shaheen and Senator Harrison's office on regular basis, emails, uh, and not just on Coakley, on many other um, matters in New Hampshire. So. We try to respond to them as far as uh, state legislators. We try to respond as best we can. 
Um, we have some restrictions as far as um, uh, you know testifying at state legislatures uh, hearings. We can we have to get special permission to do this. We we have done that in some cases. Uh, so I don't know if that answers your question. I'm not totally, we. we we respond to our uh, to the legislators, and and, I, and I've met with them, and others in this room have, and I don't find that uh, uh, those staffers, and I have uh, specifically sat with uh, a congresswoman, uh, with state reps, with a state senator, with Representative Messmer, and they don't have a grasp on it. And this is 30 years later, and two of our uh, senators were governors in this state mm -hmm. that lived right down the road here. And what I'm specifically getting to the point at, Jim, is, and again, this is nothing personal, this is strictly business, sure. okay, and it's a serious issue, is uh, I'm interested in uh, those testing wells, okay, being uh, drilled immediately. I'm interested in the Coakley Landfill Group paying for it. I am interested in the federal government paying for it. Here comes uh, a representative also that was been at some of these meetings. I'm interested, in, in, and this is personally, and both as a rep, and as, a, as a, someone that drinks the water, after 30 years, is that your agency does something, okay? You say in your memo that there is a, a scientist that's gone to Puerto Rico, is that correct? I said that, well, our lead scientist <coughs> on this, um, on this site is from Puerto Rico. Yeah, he's, they're in Puerto uh, he's Rico. scheduled to probably go there. I got that. And you know what? We all feel for the people in Puerto Rico. But uh, uh, this is New Hampshire, and uh, Puerto Rico just last year declared bankruptcy. They stiffed people they owe money over. Well, I, okay, I, hear I, me out. Hear me out. Okay. Hear, hear me out. Okay. We pay our bills. We want sure. clean water, and we're expecting you. To, we're expecting you to task people with science. And we're we're expecting you to task people with the Coakley Landfill Group to do the drilling and solve the riddle of where these PFCs are coming from. That's what we want. So we're not ending up like Bedford, and you're not doing it. And, this, and the congressional delegation's not doing it. And the United States Air Force isn't doing it. And there's a simple solution. And it's above everyone's pay grade here. And it's for, for you people to use your liaison offices. That's what it's there for. And it's not lobbying. It's to pick up the phone and say they have taken the attenuation route which was the lowball effort 30 years ago, and now in emerging science with carcinogens, we have a huge problem. And that's what I expect, and that's the end state. And that's what I, I'm sure the board feels about this. And, and that's, that's why we have an EPA. It's not for you guys to uh, um, you know, have discussions and, and think about stuff when, when the whole world's crumbling on it. It just isn't. You guys aren't earning your paycheck. You're just not. And you're not a scientist. And Mr. Chairman, I, I would uh, defer, uh, Mindy Messner has called today, she is a hydrologist, she has legislation, she is on uh, governor appointed and, and uh, legislative body appointed commissions, and I would uh, ask that she be allowed to ask Jim questions pertinent to Hampton's interest in this issue. Could I just respond first? Yeah. Okay. So the uh, uh, Gerardo Milan uh, Ramos, who is our, our scientist on this, may be going to Puerto Rico. If he goes to, uh, on the hurricane response down there, um, the work on Coakley is not stopping. Uh, however, if I said that uh, in an email or a memo, it was just to let people know he's not available for a, a public meeting for a while. The, the work is not going to stop. We have other people, other scientists who are, who are at work on the Coakley uh, project. It's not going to stop. Thank you, Arado John. is not available for a meeting. Thank you. Um, and I, I was going to respond to something else, but I, I forget what it is, so <laughs> I'd be happy to uh, take other questions. Now, what was your request? Representative Messner, who was spearheading uh, this, this issue on myriad fronts, both in uh, govern, government and governor-appointed commissions, uh, has questions uh, that uh, directly impact and are specifically directed in the interest of Hampton water drinkers. And I would like her to be able to ask Jim questions. Does the board have any objections to that? No. Does anybody in the board have any other questions that they want to ask at this point? No? Okay. You can go to the uh, podium, please. So, um, introduce yourself. I'm so Representative you Mindy Mesmer from Rye, Newcastle, and I've been. Uh, heading up the Coakley Landfill Subcommittee for the Governor's Task Force for the last year and a half or so. 
and been actively involved in this situation um, for the last year and a half, um, investigating the possible causes of cancer cases in the five town area. Uh, the first issue that came up was Coakley Landfill to our task force, and so I've been involved very actively in, as a hydrogeologist looking at this issue. And uh, so for the last year and a half, I've been asking a lot of questions about this, and um, for the last year and a half, at many times, EPA has sort of mischaracterized some of the comments I've made by asking, by saying that I was mischaracterizing the flow from the site, and this was very important because as this 1994 document says, groundwater flow is radial. And every time I said radial, Gerardo countered me. And I just brought this to the attention. I found this in a 1994 document. This is important because if it's flowing radially, it's flowing to the south and towards Hampton, as well as to the north and the east and the west, like we had, we had talked about. So, you know, it's been a, a process of trying to get people on the same page with the hydrogeo that doesn't change since 1994. So. Um, and my concern has been that PFCs would migrate, and now I believe we're seeing them. As I said that today, I sent an email to the EPA and DES talking about the recent results that were taken in May of wells um, by Aquarian and how they compare with the res results um, in May that were collected at the landfill. And my concern is there is a migration component to the south. There is a preferential flow path that's been partially identified, um, partially sampled, 500 or 600 parts per trillion on the, the landfill. And we're seeing the same cadre of uh, PFCs showing up now in the wells in, in Hampton, that serve Hampton from Aquarian. So that's my concern. I pointed that out this morning. So um, I would also talk about um, the fact that I don't, I, the, the fact that they're emerging contaminants has really is passed now, that the people who talk about emerging contaminants have taken them off the list. We already know enough to know that they're fairly, uh, they do cause some cancers. So I, pe most people don't even call them emerging anymore. So my question to you is how, I know you've said that because they're not a circle hazardous waste, that you don't have any tools in your toolbox. I'd like to know uh, the comment you just made about the drinking water aspects, what tool do you have in that program? And also would ask you about what RECRA or circular authority you might have to uh, address these issues. Uh, those are questions I can't answer. So we might get them from? It, well, you can submit them, you know, uh, the appropriate people at EPA okay. uh, would, could okay. respond to it. So, uh, also, about a year ago, I submitted a comment response letter to the, to the EPA about the five-year report talking about how, because we have PFCs, the selected remedy for the site is no longer applicable. And I was going to get a response to that by the end of September of to this year, and I haven't seen it. So I'd like to see when that might be coming, because that talks to whether or not the remedial measure implemented is appropriate or not. Obviously, I don't think it is, because now we're seeing migration of these very persistent chemicals to the south. So, right, and I think we we agree that the uh, that the remedy as it exists is is not adequate at the okay. moment. Okay, so the EPA is saying that now. Well, but we but what's what's to be done about it is not as you may have a better idea. We don't really we don't feel we have enough information to really design a system. And I think you would agree with that that we could use a lot more information. Actually, no, because the 1994 MOM for this site had four alternatives, and as representative. May I interrupt, Mr. Chairman? And you're big on acronyms. You said oh, MOM. Uh, migration management of migration was part of the record of decision. There's several documents that form the record of decision. So management of my migration was a study of uh, alternatives that, and you referenced one of them that um, they picked MM2. It's called management migration two, which was one of the cheaper approaches, which in included a cap, and then on OU1, which is the landfill itself, and then um, uh, just watching to see what happened to the chemicals. So, so if I can say, so the the contamination that that was designed to address. Yeah. That exactly. So that, and that's my point is that in this last five year re review, that's not appropriate anymore because Correct. we know that that is not working. So I would say brush off the 1994 MOM. I just have been looking at it for the last five days actually in very a lot of detail. Take MM4, which is the active remedial measure to control migration off the site. There's already detailed cost estimates. 
in there. There's uh, a cost estimate, which included at the time only VOC and metals um, treatment. Take those blocks out, stick in the GAC. We know how much GACs cost. Uh, Portsmouth has very successfully implemented a pilot program there. Slide that in as a cost estimate, and it only increases the budget about $380,000 over the 3.2 million that was in the MOM, and it should be good to go. The, the hydro doesn't change <laughs> since 1994, so I don't, I don't really think that that's a big issue. Well, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to disagree, but what I've been told by our scientists is we don't really have enough information to, I don't know if, if this system addressed uh, groundwater that was migrating radially, radially or if it was just in for one, well, one direction. Can I just interrupt for a second? Sure. What I'd like to do is keep this on. I mean, I'm, I'm not letting the EPA off the off the uh, hook at all. But Jim was here for a specific reason, and if he's not a scientist, if we're peppering him with questions that he's unable and unqualified right. to answer, I don't think right. that that's right. right. I think that if you know, if we want him from a public, a government thing to bring it to the EPA, that's different. But I don't think we should be firing questions at him that he's unqualified to answer. I don't think that that's correct. Well, I think, wait a minute, uh, let me finish, please. All right? I think he came here specifically to talk about the, the fact that why the meeting wasn't public. And I think that's an issue that we're dealing with. So, I mean, I agree 100% with what the questions are. But if he's unqualified to answer the questions, we're going to sit here and, and just keep getting I'm not qualified. I, I, would, I would offer this is that uh, these questions go on the record that we're driving uh, the end state, uh, which is not satisfactory at this point, and that Representative Messner and Representative Edgar is here, if he would like to come up to the table, ask pointed questions for a detailed response from a government agency that we pay for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, would that be more of a, of a state issue? Right now, I know it's a Coakley land pill that we're talking about, but would that be more of a, from a representative's point of view than from a selectman's point of view? I'm just trying to keep this meeting on task. Go ahead. I just have a question for you. Sure. You keep saying you don't have enough information. Well, I guess what we want to know is what is happening to get you the information that you need. Because right now, we have a private company that's going crazy testing everything for us. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, just, I guess I don't understand why they can do that for their municipalities that they serve. But why the EPA is not doing it for the region that is in peril of this dangerous water, if you're eventually becoming dangerous water. Right. That's, that's my question. What, what are you doing to get the information you need? Well, we, we've asked the Cochlear Landfill Group to install some additional wells at the site, which they're in the process of doing. Um, again, it's not, you know, it's not, you just, you don't just drill a well and, and you know, pump some water out, and, that, and that's it. There's just a lot of parameters and steps, and I think Mindy could probably talk about those a lot more. You know, maybe it's not happening quickly enough. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it, it, it is, um, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's not that simple. We're going to be asking Coakley to do more. They, again, have proceeded on most of the things we've asked them to do. So, um, you know, as far as what Aquarian's doing with their wells as a private water supply company, that's, you know, it, it's a different regulatory um, scheme there. Um, I'm not familiar with what they're required to do uh, by DES or even our, our uh, uh, drinking water program. They're actually going beyond what they're required to do for the right. sake well, of so the people that are drinking their water. At the moment, so. All right, thank you. Mike, do you have something to add? Well, uh, I haven't been involved in this to this point as much as a lot of other people, in, uh, including uh, Mindy and, and Rennie. Now Regina's getting involved uh, with the uh, the committee, and I've been put on as an alternate. We'll see if the state accepts that. But from the perspective I've been seeing, it does appear that, uh, I'll use the analogy of Stalingrad, it, it appears that we're not getting the answers, and it, it, it almost it seems to be one obstruction or reluctance to continue something or give, give you a timeline on what's going to happen time after time after time, and it just keeps on stretching out. So I, I think that would help a lot if we get more commitments of things, a timetable of when certain things were going to happen. You know, as far as investigations, and not feel like when you ask somebody something, you're getting half an answer. Not, not for me right now, but I've been at some of the other meetings, that, or denials of, the, the, of what maybe some of the science is, or, or what some of the results are, because you're you can test the heck out of this, and, and I'm, I'm unfortunately one of the ones that does do like to do an awful lot of testing, and I like to have the most information possible to make a decision. But uh, it just seems, uh, from my perspective of seeing it, is that it, 
it's just not a real thrust to take care of this problem. It's a very serious problem for us, and if it continues to happen, it's going to be a lot more serious, and it's going to affect the state quite a bit too, because the beach is, is right down there. Mm -hmm. and they don't get their water from the ocean for drinking, so um, that's that's all I have to say. Thank yeah. you. And, and I guess this, some of the comments I was getting at is that these are things I've been talking about for a while, and to have, you know, and I am frustrated because I feel like this has, there have been some basic technical things that have continually been questioned and those have impeded the progress uh, at looking at this happening to the south and to the east and to the west. There's still an issue to the east with rye and now we have an issue in rye with our water. So, you know, these are issues that are very important. There's still no wells to the east to look at whether or not flow is, to migra is migrating to rye. Um, and so, you know, I just am frustrated with the fact that there's been a continual uh, effort to rewrite or, or maybe not understand the technical issues that are the basic issues that deal with, that affect what is happening now, what we're seeing now. So I'm concerned because I've been talking about this for a while and, you know, now we're saying we don't have enough information. You know, they still, CLG has not sampled some of the wells between here and uh, the landfill. They were asked to by EPA and they didn't do it and they still haven't done it. So. You know, I, I don't, I'm frustrated that, as Mike said, this has sort of, you know, lengthened this process, stretched it out, and we still don't seem to have the answers or a timetable for it. I, I agree it's frustrating. I mean, they've sampled some wells. DES has sampled the wells. The sampling is going to continue. It's not, it, it doesn't happen overnight. I, I agree. Um, so what my, other? My question is, is this stuff that, that Jim can answer, or is this stuff that needs to go to somebody else? Well, I, I kind of want the board to understand a little bit, too, where the frustration lies, and I support... I, I think we totally to understand okay. where, the, where okay. the frustration lies, and I, and I think we're totally in favor yeah. of finding solutions to it, and I think we're totally in favor of getting to the correct people to do that, and I think we're totally in favor of that the meetings should all be public. I think that's, I mean, maybe not public comment and stuff, but the public should be allowed. We're totally in favor of that, but what I'm saying is, from the point of view are we questioning somebody who does not have the answers? We have to question the right people, and that's my question. So I would say I think we all know where we're going. And I think. Yeah, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, and, and you raised a good point, and perhaps in summation, and Jim, thanks for coming up and sitting in the hot seat here uh, in in Hampton. Really, I really do appreciate it, and know the board does. Uh, is there a commitment, as you as the team leader of government relations, that uh, these meetings that you will hold with the Coakley Landfill Group are open to Eversource, are open to Seacoast communities, are open to Aquarian, are open to our town attorney, that there is no violation of federal law, there is no violation of state law with closed meetings, especially when this, this board has unanimously expressed concern about uh, the threat and uh, conflicts of interest. Would you give us that pledge now that, that uh, us and our designated representatives can attend these meetings in here and have access to data? Right. Unfortunately, I can't say that. Um, and, and why not? Well, our, our opinion is that it's not a violation of, of federal law. That no, but it's a matter of common decency okay. and public safety, and you are a government employee that is paid by citizens of the United States of America. What is your basis for not, is, is a matter of common decency and uh, good government that you wouldn't want this open? So these situations like are occurring right now in Bedford don't happen here. Well, I'm just not aware of this happening. You know, we have meetings with with GE, with a lot of large companies. If we were, if they were going to be public meetings, they, they wouldn't come to the meeting. You know, or they would come and they wouldn't say anything. The meetings would not be productive. I don't know how, how to say it other than that. Um, we will, we're willing to, so we could ask Coakley Landfill Group if they would participate in a public meeting with all the local elected officials and the, uh, the general public, and maybe they would. These meetings that we've had from them, have that's not been the case in the past. We're just trying to get this one done so we can get agreements, so we can move ahead and do all this stuff that everyone wants us to do, that we want to do, that Coakley Landfill Group needs to do it. And to have a big public meeting is, is really not the way to make it happen. It's not that we're trying to hide anything. We will um, discuss whatever we discuss with them. Um, I mean, just I think anybody in this room would understand if you're trying to you know, some meetings are better done not in the public, not that we're trying to hide anything. Again, we're willing to come to uh, Hampton at any time and do a public meeting. Uh, 
to go where the one we're planning now is going to be in Greenland again, which is right near Coakley. Um, but if you would like other some other people to come from EPA to a future, uh, future Board of Selectmen meeting, we can certainly arrange that. We're not trying to hide anything. Um, but as far as just having a public meeting, I'm not giving the legal answer. I know our legal folks are saying that we can't be required to do that. Um, I just think it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get have a, a productive meeting where we have a list of things we want we want to get agreement with on them with them to have them take action. Well, I would say this is that uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. You have had closed meetings, you have had secrecy, and the situation is getting worse. And uh, were it not for you coming up here again and sitting in the hot seat, were it not for the town of Hampton uh, challenging uh, this phenomena, uh, perhaps uh, we would be fast tracking towards a Bedford phenomena. And, and I would say that we would we would urge you. Uh, to have these meetings open and, and for us simply to have access to data and to be, you to be more rigorous and I think that, that that's a no-brainer that you and everybody that works for the citizens of the United States of America you're not beholden to corporations okay? you're beholden to citizenry right. these corporations have no special privilege uh, that ranks uh, uh, supremely above citizenship and safe drinking water and I would I would urge you to uh, change that mantra and and uh, maybe they need to say less maybe citizens need to say more and maybe you need to tell these corporations exactly what to do thank you mr. chairman okay, well, thank one you. other note is uh, uh, the data is public um, you know all the data that is uh, that comes to EPA from the coastal landfill group is, is available you know we try to not make it when it's uh, uh, private wells we try to you know, black some of that, with, withhold some of the names, but all of the data is available. Okay. I want to thank you for coming in tonight. Could I, uh, sure. yeah. Is that the town attorney asked something and then? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your being here also. Um, the uh, During the past week, I have made at the board's authorization uh, demands to the EPA that this meeting that the EPA was going to conduct in Chelmsford this Thursday be made open to the public. and. Uh, what EPA has responded is that the federal sunshine law does not uh, cover this particular agency as it is an agency headed by a single person rather than a collegial body. And uh, although that appears to be the case, uh, I think Mr. Bean's admonition is, is important that what really is at bottom here is the public interest. I did want to report, though, that Coakley Landfill Group itself conducted a public meeting in Northampton on August 15th uh, regarding how it does business. It is interested in having the public understand what it is and what it does. Uh, we've also corresponded, as uh, Selectman Bean mentioned, with uh, Attorney Sullivan in Portsmouth. He has uh, indicated that if this board invites him to come to a meeting, he will come to this board, address the board in public at a, at a very future meeting uh, with uh, the gentleman who is their project manager mm -hmm. and with their groundwater hydrogeologist uh, from Lewiston, Maine. And so uh, he would like this, this board and the public to understand more about the Coakley Landfill Group as well. So I believe it is possible, even though the law does not require that EPA be subject to the Sunshine Act, that this could be conducted in public. And I think you've seen just a sample of the important items that can be brought to the to the agency for the benefit of the agency. The towns of Hampton and Northampton have engaged a respected groundwater hydrologist also who has worked with EPA in the state before who would participate on a technical level if allowed. Um, I just think it behooves the agency to allow that kind of participation as well to inform you rather than waiting until maybe the, the Copley Landfill Group gives you the information they want to or don't. You have the ability to force it and you have others with resources who are willing to help rather than see it get to the point of a benefit. And so uh, I would urge the agency to reconsider to allow technical people, if you're not willing to allow all of us who are sitting here to be at such a meeting, but at least allow technical people who can help give you information uh, and another perspective to be in attendance. Yeah. 
And I, I think those are uh, a good suggestions of getting additional resources. I just think that this upcoming meeting is not, you know, it's, it's one of the things that's on the agenda so we can talk about moving forward in a more public way. So I, I have no, um, you know, I don't know what's going to come out of that discussion, but it sounds like there could be something positive. And one thing just to note is the meeting is not going, it's not, not going to happen on Thursday because uh, it's Rosh Hashanah and that was public affairs person mistake for letting that be uh, <coughs> be scheduled. I've done that before in, the, in my 20 something years, but uh, so we're still we're going to come up with another date. It could be the next date, it could be uh, the second week in October at this point. So. Okay, thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you, Jim. Thanks.